Okay, so in this video we are going to install uh, the PuTTY SSH client. This is uh, software that, that only the Windows users will, will need to utilize. Um, Mac people have built-in software uh, that they can use. I'll have another video for you guys. I don't have a Mac, so I won't be able to... I'll have to give you a video from someone else. But really all we have to do is get a terminal open and execute a command. So. Um, if you're a Mac user, if you're using a Mac right now, skip the rest of this video and move to the next one. But Windows people, stick with me. Okay, so I've opened up a web browser, uh, Chrome in my case, and I have done a search for UD PuTTY, P-U-T-T-Y. My first search results are exactly what I, I'm looking for. It's the PuTTY SSH client um, that's being, that's in the, the UDeploy software distribution. So I'll click that button and this page will open up and we'll see we are in you, you deploy, of course, uh, and it is PuTTY that we're trying to download. And here is the download, right there. Now click, so click that button, your da uh, well, we'll do that, we'll click that button and then this page opens up, okay? And then we'll, we'll have to uh, click this, click that one. I don't know why you have to click download twice. Uh, once the download is finished, there will be, uh, you know, down in the, the bottom left-hand side of, at least of Chrome, if not Firefox and others, you, you, this, the software download will be sitting right there. You can, you can just click that download and install uh, PuTTY from there. So uh, once you're finished with that, you can open up the PuTTY software. Uh, you may have to go to the search menu in the bottom left and type in PUTTY. It'll be the first one, uh, unless you have it on the desktop or something like that, but start up the program and this is what you should see. On the left hand side here we have a bunch of settings that we can take care of. We're only going to have to do a, a few of them, not many, and these, this is our main screen here. So for our host name we're going we're gonna to connect to copeland.udel.edu. I'm going to show you all my settings in a moment, just giving you a little bit of a heads up on that. Um, importantly, we want to we want to move to the keyboard here, and we should have Control H. Right, we should have that one set. If ever you log in to uh, Copeland, the machine that we're going to be logging into here, the, the main campus, that well, machine Copeland lives in in in, uh, in Newark, so we'll be logging in there to do some work, and that's what we're using this for to remote control that machine. If you log in there and you're typing something in and your backspace key is not working properly, it's because this setting is not right. So I, I believe it should be Control H. I don't know why this one, would, maybe because defaults were there. I, I'm not sure. I believe it should be Control H. Let's see. We'll see in this video if it's supposed to be. The keyboard, I, I kind of like to have the, in the appearance, Windows window appearance. I like to change the font size. I think 10 points a little too small. Uh, I think I changed it to 14. I'll show you my settings in a minute, though. And I changed the font type, too, to something a little better. And there are some other settings in there. You might find something in there that you find interesting. Um, come back to settings. If you have copeland.udel.edu typed in here, or you can just hold for a minute, and I'll show you everything. Then what I want to do is save that set of settings. I want to name it and save it so that I can continue to use those the next time I, I log in. I want to just say, hey, let's use those settings. So I would type in then Copeland right here. I used Copeland because it seems appropriate. You could call it anything you want, the save session, but it seems since we're logging into Copeland, I should probably name the, the settings Copeland. I guess all I'm really saying here is that if you call it something other than Copeland, which doesn't have an E in it, by the way, C-O-P-L-A-N-D, then it won't affect your ability to log in. But what will happen is once we've had all these settings saved, we would, we would type Copeland here and then save. And then you would see Copeland come into this box. Then the next time you want to log in to Copeland using Putty, you would select Copeland and then load. You load the saved settings. And I'm sure you just saw that it loaded my copeland.udel.edu. That's copeland.udel.edu, not 
at. So there's no E and there's no at symbol. Right? And let's just see something here because this has been working. Let's go back to the keyboard. Wow, I think it works with control question mark now too. Interesting. Um, if we look at window appearance, my saved, set, my saved session called Copeland, I do in fact have 14 point font and I changed it to Lucinda Sands. That's up to you, it's entirely up to you. It will not prevent you from logging in. The only thing that's gonna be a pain in the butt is if this key uh, backspace doesn't work. So if we log in, I think, I, did I just say this? If we log in and it doesn't work, the backspace with the question, the control question mark, then when you log out, when you come back in, change this setting to control H, go back to sessions and save it again. Right over top, right over, right as code, just select that and, and type save again. All right, and then now you've got your settings all ready to go. Um, we'll just open the connection. Okay, so once I've clicked open, or yeah, open, uh, th this is my screen. So it's looking for me to log in. I'll use my own username, W-B-O-Y-E-R. You use yours because the next one is going to be my password. Now this is my UDEL password. You use your UDEL password too, the same one that you use for your email. Now, um, Unix will not place asterisks, for instance, in, in the password as you're typing. You won't see anything typing at all, but um, the, the password is typing in there, even though you can't see it. So I've typed mine in already. Let's see if I got it right. I did not get it right. Let me try again. All right, so I got it that time. So this is what we wind up saying. Notice, I'm gonna just say it once again. I don't know if you can see my mouse or not. Maybe you can. Uh, password is blank, but I did type it in there. So just be aware of that. We see a little bit of information about the system and it's followed by what's called a command prompt here. So uh, I'm, mine reads bash 3.2. Yours probably reads Copeland or your username at Copeland or something like that, something having to do with Copeland. We're going to change yours to Bash in the next video because the, the Bash shell or command prompt has one particular feature uh, that, that is useful for us. It's, it's quite nice. So we're going to change it. But for right now, this is good enough. Um, what we want to do here is do a PWD, type in PWD, enter. And you should see something similar to that. Similar is relative and you don't, you don't know, but it should read something like home slash, it could be user A, it could be user B, I don't know, it could probably, uh, maybe it's a user C, I'm not sure. Um, it'll be some number and, and then this last number, uh, 06127 is me. And so everyone's going to have a unique number there. Uh, your username is an alias for that number or vice versa. That number is an alias for the username. I don't know which one, but the system sees those two things as the same. And so that number is your home directory. We're hoping that you do not have just a slash here, a forward slash. So the result of that command, PWD, which stands for present working directory, should produce something that looks similar to what I got, not this, forward slash. It should be something other than just forward slash. If we have just a forward slash, then we have a bit of a problem. Um, there's no way to solve this without a system administrator. So if if in fact you have a forward slash there, then how about we try to jump this as quickly as possible because it, who knows, in the beginning of the semester it could take a little bit for them to get around to working on it. 
I hope they do it quickly. But maybe what you could do is start uh, send an email. And I believe it's consult s u l t at udell. Now I, I just typed it into the command prompt there, just so you could see what I was saying. This is an email, so you would want to do it through your webmail, and that would be the place you're sending it to. Consult at udell.edu. And the subject would be something like Copeland login problem. And the body or the question that you're going to ask them or statement that you're going to make is um, when I log in to Copeland, I'm dropped in the root directory instead of my home directory. Can you fix that? I think they'll know what you're talking about with that. That's only in the event that you got, oh look, my backspace has worked too. So it works with a with a question mark. Hmm. If you got only this, the forward slash like that, if you, do, if you got it, anything else, then let's just leave it. And then let's do also one more thing just so we if you if you got anything other than the forward, if you got the forward slash, then you're you're kind of stuck at the moment until we get consult to um, respond and correct that problem. But for everyone who who got something similar to what I have here as a result of the PWD command, then let's do ls ls enter. <clears throat> and let's see what we have. What we want to see is something called public right here, this one. I have more things than you will have because I have other stuff in my, my home directory. This is kind of going to be kind of like if you created a new user in Windows, you would that new user would come by default with some automatic folders automatically, particular folders like my music, my documents. Everybody gets those same um, those same folders. What you want to have here is something called, oh, it's this one, public HTML, not just public, public HTML. You may have another one called mail. I don't know why I don't have a mail, but these all these others are directories that I created, so you wouldn't have those. You should have a public HTML. So what I would like to ha see to have happen at this point is... We've now installed AnyConnect. You may have installed Google, Google Authenticator. In any case, you were able to get yourself connected with AnyConnect so that we could use Putty, and Putty's installed. And we've taken a peek at your home directory. So I, at this point, what we can, so there's something we could submit Number one, it'd be great to have something submitted. Number two, I I'd really would like to see what we're looking like here. You know what? Let's do ls, negative l, enter. Okay. Yours is going to look, remember, yours is going to look different than mine because I have different things in my home directory. You should have public HTML though, and that's the one I'm concerned with. I would like to be able to see that you have a public HTML, and I would like to see, I won't highlight the part that I'm really interested in, this DRWXR, right, all of that stuff, I would like to see what you have that set to. And that, so you, none of this will happen if you don't have a home directory. So if you only got root in the beginning, then this none of this will be there. If you got something other than root, so your directory looked like something like that, if it rhymes with that, then you, and you did an ls and you had public HTML, then your ls negative l, public HTML, these are the permissions for the folder. And I would like to see what they're set at. And we'll discuss them in, in detail as we move forward. I would just like to make sure that everybody is, everything is set up so that we can move forward 
And if there's anything that has to happen through um, IT to get things up and running, that we can jump on that as quickly as possible. And so that's why I would like to look at that. So at this point, for this right here, if you could take a screenshot, take a screenshot of what you've got there. Now you can do that either through your machine, using your machine in some way, use the, the, the print screen function on, on the keyboard, or I don't care, take a picture with your phone, whatever. I'll uh, have a, there's a location on Canvas where you can um, submit something. So what we want to do is submit that screenshot. So I can take a look at where you are in the system and if you're set up properly. And then if you're not, we can move forward uh, individually on, on correcting them because they're, they're likely, I mean, they're not going to all have the same problem. So if I can see everybody's individually, then I can respond individually to um, anything that's not right. And then we can be at kind of at square one. <laughs> We've got all the software installed and we know um, our Copeland home directory is configured properly. And so we're at a good launch point at that point. Now this may take a minute. Oh, there's one more thing that we want to do. I'll do it in the next video. I would like to um, change your command prompt from Copeland to Bash. And then we'll have some further discussions. I know that you're probably feeling quite lost in the middle of this right now, and I, I completely expect that to be the case. Um, this will become second nature. So don't get discouraged at this moment. We're just doing a lot of things that we just need to, they're kind of preliminary stuff and I don't expect you to really understand what you're doing here right now. So don't be dismayed. <laughs> we'll get through this and it'll all work out great. All right, so I'm gonna sign off on this one. The next one, we'll change that command prompt. Um, and you, you shoot me a, uh, shoot me in a screenshot and we're done. All right. See you next time.